I'll be honest, I know just as much as you do about which team I'm about to take over. I know the teams in the MLS, I know one of these two boxes has a national team shirt in it too, and I'm going to try and rebuild an MLS team with players from that nation. While I open these boxes, let me tell you about today's video sponsor, Surprise Shirts. They've actually sent me these two boxes to promote their new box that guarantees a team that's playable in career mode. Every single shirt they send out is brand new and 100% authentic, and they don't send customer shirts from teams in their own country. It looks like I've been sent a shirt from the MLS and that's great because I know a lot of you guys love the league as much as I do. We'll be heading to the west coast to try and rebuild LAFC. While we open the national team box, why don't you check out the link in my description where code GEO, G -E -O, gets 10% off at the checkout. You can even choose to avoid certain teams, leagues and continents if you'd rather not end up playing in Korea or Australia. And here's the second part of today's video. We're going to be rebuilding LAFC with players from Mexico. Let's get into FIFA. We're going to try and keep things super realistic in this save, following every single rule that the MLS really has. We're also going to try and play our three Mexicans, Omar Campos, Eric Duenas and Nathan Ordaz in as many games as we can. If they're not injured, they're playing, despite Ordaz only being 57 overall. Why should I be excited to play as LAFC though? Let's have a look at this team. We've lost Vela, Bale and Chiellini since the last time I played in the MLS, but that's actually good news for us because it means we have two designated player slots free. This means we can sign some players on whatever wage from whatever club that we want. Buwanga and Lloris are already using two of these slots, so get ready for two very big name signings. I think we need to strengthen both our wing play and our midfield, and we have more than enough salary cap to continue the Spanish-speaking theme by signing Eric Lamella from Seville. We can also grab our first Mexican signing, which is going to be Orbelen Pineda from AEK Athens. We're our two biggest signings in already, pre-season starts, and we get drawn with some pretty tough trips around South America. We decided to play the first couple of games anyway, just to see how good this team could really be. A new manager in place. What sort of impact are you expecting from him? Well, it's a big appointment, so he has to get off to a good start here. And with the players they've got, they have to be challenging for the title come the end of the season, that's for sure. It's actually been so long since I played an MLS career, and even longer since I put one on YouTube, but this team could be one of the most fun MLS teams I've ever used. After pre-season ended, I also managed to sign Frankie Amaya and Richard Ledesma for the bench. Before we knew it, it was time for us to take over our first MLS game as LAFC manager. Our first game was actually against Real Salt Lake, so it was actually a pretty tense game with two good teams. It seemed like Pinedo was struggling to adapt to North American soccer in the first half, but in the second half, he was so much better. As you'd expect, by securing our first win, we got the fans on side straight away. A few more games passed, first at Kansas, then at Minnesota, and after playing three games and winning all three, it looked like things were starting off in LAFC's favour. None of these teams were actually particularly challenging though, Seattle would be, and April had the biggest date of the season, the Sounders away. They're unbeaten this year, just like us, and have been conference runners-up in six of the past eight years. If we wanted to qualify for the playoffs, we had to win this game, and all 38,000 seats at the Seahawks Stadium were sold out. Fans from the NFL, the NBA, and even MLB wanted to come to the MLS to see what could be a conference-deciding game. In the first couple of months, our star boy Eric Lamella hadn't really performed too well, but his free kick nearly found Aaron Long's head. By far, Seattle Sounders were the best team we had faced up to this point in the season. De La Vega pulling it across, and that's just a great finish there from Rui Diaz. He's been at Seattle for a long time, and he's been punishing LAFC for just as long. But Boanga, he was punishing teams too. His pace was almost too much for the defence to handle, but it was good goalkeeping there from Frey. We won the ball high up the pitch, Pineda, one of our signings winning it. He played through Ordaz with just 15 minutes to go. He was going to cut inside, pass Nathan, pass Gomez Andre. And that was going to be our first goal, the equaliser. It's a really good goal to say he's just 57 overall, cutting inside, a nice step over and an even better finish. Not so sure about the celebration, he didn't really seem too sure what to do. This meant we had about 10 minutes to try and get a winning goal. Seattle went very defensive, we went fully attack, but we couldn't quite get the goal. After we just about scraped that draw, things didn't actually get any easier for us at LAFC. Only a few days later, we were hosting a mammoth away trip. New York Red Bulls had made one of the furthest away journeys in the MLS, and it was another game that could really define our future, because they're conference leaders, but in the Eastern Conference. 
The Red Bulls have actually won the Eastern Conference six times in the past, but the last time they did it was 2018 when they had our defender Aaron Long in their defence. He tried to keep a clean sheet in this one, but he wasn't successful because the Red Bulls would score after just 16 minutes. A few minutes later, they had a corner that we didn't get the first contact on, or the third, or the fifth, and that ended up with us being 2-0 down. This season, we haven't actually come back from behind to end up winning, so we knew the best possibility for us would be trying to get a draw. Eric Lamella got the ball out wide. We have about half an hour to go after this, and if he'd have scored there, we probably would have had a decent chance of going on to win the match. Buanga would play it through to Atuesta. We had Ordaz, the 57-rated striker, showing why he is rated that low. Not quite as good as his finish he did against the Sounders. Buanga would pass it through to Ordaz, but this time he'd pass it to Lamella, 1-on-1. One -one. It was saved, but it would fall to Buanga, who just about found the back of the net. It was actually a really nice finish. On the volley, finding a way to get past the goalkeeper is a super difficult chance. Buanga would have another chance right here though, fighting with Duncan and he would win the ball. Through one on one, he's already scored in this game and with just a few seconds to go, he would equalize. So after the game should have finished, we get the equalizer and that could be a very important point because it does give us a little bit of breathing space at the top of our division. There's barely even time for New York to actually kick off. So getting the equalizer, getting the point, is a really big deal. After the relief of rescuing yet another massive draw, we actually only needed one more win to confirm a playoff spot. If we win this game, we could rest our players for the next two matches and start paying attention to things like the young player super draft. If we don't win this match, then we have to keep pressing on with the league. The biggest problem was that this game was against our massive city rivals, LA Galaxy, who are also doing really well this season. I have always found it quite funny that the LA Derby was actually called El Trafico because of how congested the city is and it's one of the biggest derbies in the MLS probably after the Hudson Derby in New York City. We got off to a pretty decent start getting a chance there after 30 minutes and Aaron Long would go from defending our goal to attacking theirs and we would have the lead with a nice header there from a corner. While LA Galaxy don't have a David Beckham, an Ibrahimovic, or even a Landon Donathan, they do have Joseph Pansel. You might remember him from being one of those cheap beasts you could always sign from Genk on career mode, and he had that early chance right there just before half time. There was just enough time in the half for them to have yet another attack. Brugman driving into the box, the ball would rebound and then would find the back of the net. Kind of similar to that one we scored with Bowanga in the last match so we can't really complain. We got another corner, this time Aaron Long went for the spectacular bicycle kick and our centre back has scored one of the goals of the season. Celebrates in style, pointing like Haaland straight at a Galaxy fan. Bwanga ends the match with the typical intensity we want, diving in, trying to win the ball back and we confirm a 2-1 win in El Trafico. I think it's even better that we won the LA Derby with a player scoring two goals who was actually born in California. It really mattered a little bit more to Aaron Long and you can tell from his performances today. With a playoff spot secured, we have a look at some of the Californian born players in the upcoming draft. There are a few decent players in here, but there's no future Landon Donovan, Clint Dempsey or even Tim Howard in the selection. It's a little bit more Breck Shea, DeAndre Yedlin or Zach Stefan this year. In the MLS, it's always important to look to the future, so we do pick a few players up still. I doubt any will play in our upcoming playoff campaign and the big teams have all qualified for this. Messi's Miami, Almada's Atalanta and Ricky Pug's LA Galaxy are all big threats that are waiting for us but our Mexican powered LAFC is just as good as any of them. With the season over we were actually drawn against the Timbers. We beat them home and away in the main conference matches so I think we have a pretty decent chance of progressing into the conference semi-finals. Because we won our conference, we actually got a bye for the quarterfinals, meaning our first match was in the semi-finals. We just had to win two games in the conference to win our conference, and then win the grand final, which was against the other winner of the other conference. It might sound complicated, but we just basically have to win three more matches, and then we are the official winners of the MLS. Portland Timbers aren't actually very successful in this competition, but they absolutely should have gone 1-0 up with that chance right there. No wonder he's kicking himself. That should have been the lead. Moreno's their most dangerous player. He's so good on the ball. He dribbles in and he does give them a lead just before half time. Nothing Hugo Lloris can do about that one. All of a sudden, we need a comeback. And is Ordaz our man? No, he's not. He's now about 60 overall now that we've played nearly a full season. But we're going to just push him out to the wing because we've brought on Angel. He would go on to score. And that's such a good goal. Such a good time to score. Just 10 minutes to go means we can go fully attack and try and get the winner. It was actually a nice bit of passing move right there, but Wanga playing it through to Angel one-on-one, and he just kind of chipped it over the goalkeeper into the side of the net. 
Angel would have the second chance as well, but he would pull it across. And Atuesta, he was the unlikely man bursting from central defensive midfield to give us the lead. It was another nice move as well. Angel had so much space. He could have taken the shot on, but it was the right decision to pass it because it was an absolute guaranteed goal. No way we're going to miss that one. And we get the win. There really is nothing better than a late comeback. And believe me, we've done plenty of them this season. If we want to win our conference though, we're going to have to beat Seattle Sounders in the conference final or the grand semi-final. We're going to be hosts of this match because we finished above them in the main conference league. And you already know the entire city of LA is ready to buy tickets to drive us forwards. We're a bit worried about Jody Morris and De La Vega because they're both on really good form, but our team is just as good as theirs. Let's get this match underway. I do have to say that Seattle Sounders have one of the coolest stories in the MLS, especially their manager Brian Schmetzer. He started playing for the club in 1980. He moved around a bit but finished his career there in 1995. He took over as an assistant manager in 1996 and he's been manager since 2016. So this guy has devoted his entire career to getting Seattle Sounders to the level that they're at at the minute. Hopefully that level is going to be lower than ours though because of course we want to get through to this grand MLS final. There were some big tackles flying in in the first half an hour and it led to the first chance from Seattle but it's a great save that from Hugo Lloris absolutely showing why he's taken up one of our designated player spots. Jody Morris and Atencio would pass it around a little bit here. Morris would pass it off to Rusinek and this time Loris can't stop the shot. It was hit with so much power and we're behind to the Sounders before half time. We had a chance to equalize just before half time but we were marginally offside and we didn't even score it anyway. Buwanga yet again being the playmaking danger man winger and he has been so important. He got on the ball again here in the 53rd minute. He used his pace, he got past Gomez Andrade and then he finessed it in the far corner. What a finish that was and absolutely the man we wanted on the end of this. He's got about 28 goals for us this season. He has the potential, apparently according to the game, to break the scoring record in the MLS. I don't think he'll do it because that's about six more goals but he had the chance to get another here and that would have been a nice step forward but yet again we were just offside. We were absolutely on top in the second half. We had Bogus coming on in midfield and he would find Ordaz one on one. Our hero, our low rated hero has scored the goal to put us ahead. Celebrates in style with the Bafana Bafana South Africa celebration. It was yet another really nice finish and he is low rated but his finishing is in the 70s so I guess we should probably be expecting that by now. We got about 10 minutes to go. Ordaz is dropping deep, a bit like Harry Kane. And that's where he's proved he is a little bit limited when it comes to dribbling, strength and passing. A really good chance for Sounders. And Loris closed the angle perfectly. Rui Diaz is going to be ruining the fact that he missed that one. Now just five minutes to go. Atuesta wins the ball. He's got Ordaz in front of him. Can he get around Gomez Ardrade? Well, he cuts back inside and his finesse shot has let him down. But Wango probably finds the top corner in that situation. The very last attack of the game now for Sounders. And Bogus is going to try and clear it. But Rusinak has one last chance. And Loris makes one last save. We get yet another win. And we're through into the grand final. So it's all going to come down to this single match. We're the West Conference champions. And our opponents, Philadelphia, have beaten Messi's Miami and Almada's Atalanta on their route to the final as East Conference champions. The final is actually going to be in LA, but not at our home ground. Instead, we have the chance to win the MLS at our big rival LA Galaxy Stadium. Talk about rubbing salt into the wound. It is a little bit of a shame that this is taking place at the Dignity Health Sports Center and not at the Rose Bowl because last year, LAFC and LA Galaxy actually had an attendance of over 85,000 people showing up to that game on the 4th of July. Instead, just 27,000 tickets were sold for this one, even though it's arguably an even more important game to the fans of LAFC. We got a few early chances, Lamella being important and Ordaz nearly slipping through Boanga for what surely would have been the opening goal. Philadelphia Union had some really decent chances too. Alejandro Bedoya trying to run through and he would get on the end of it. If he'd have somehow chipped that to the back post, that would have been an open header and probably 1-0 for Philadelphia instead. It was a really tense match, but look at that ball straight onto Boanga's foot. He scored so many for us like that this year but he couldn't score when it matters. I'm not sure if he has low composure or if it was my fault for trying to smash it a little bit too hard. Wagner and Badoya were their two best players by far and they linked up just before half time but could only hit the outside of the post. A few more millimeters to the right and that probably beats Loris at his near post. 
Union had the last chance of the first half and also the first chance of the second half. Loris just about stopping the corner from going in. They were so dangerous from their set pieces. It seemed like no matter what we did, we just couldn't clear it. And this was the worst example of it. That's how we went 1-0 down. We just made about four or five errors. And if we look at the replay, it was an absolute hilarious goal. This guy misses the ball. It hits him on the back of the shin. Loris dives over it. We get it again with Long. He can't clear it. And their striker just about pokes it past the diving Loris to make it 1-0. An absolutely hilarious goal. And I think that's probably what people think of when they think of the MLS. Of course, we want to try and score as soon as possible after we conceded. Buenga one on one straight from the kickoff, but for some reason, he just can't quite get his shot away. This is turning into a bit of a calamity for LAFC because Union are pressing forward, trying to get a second goal, and really they should have had one with at least one of those two chances. We have still got 10 minutes to try and get this goal that will equalize it and put us into extra time. Atueste pulls it across to Ordaz and somehow he scoops it past their goalkeeper to equalize. This guy, I can't believe how good he has been for us. It was part of the challenge to use as many Mexican players as we can. That's the only reason he's anywhere near the squad and he has almost single-handedly got us to this final. Loris also being a massive part of our team and he saves yet another one. With our last few seconds of the match, we hoof it up to Ordaz and if he could have turned his defender right there, who knows, maybe we would have got another really, really late winner. Into extra time and we have some very tired legs. We had a really good counter opportunity right there, but instead it looks like Union are going to get a shot away and it's another terrific save from Hugo Loris. Another corner comes in and we've seen how dangerous they are from these already. Sullivan jumps highest and at his near post and when there was actually a near post marker. We are now 2-1 down and we have 10 minutes to try and save our season. Finally, we win a header from a corner and now we can try and counter. Angel passes it to Lamella and Lamella finds Angel through one-on-one. -on -one. Surely this can be their equaliser. It's not he hits the post, but the rebound just about finds the back of the net. That means a lot to us. We're going to penalties at the very least, and we have a chance to try and win this in normal time. Honestly, I have no idea how I didn't score the first one, but I'm so lucky that it bounced straight back to Angel and we could just about fire it in past their goalkeeper. It was a nice finish between the defender and the goalkeeper actually looking at the replay, but still, we should have been scoring the first shot, no doubt about that. Union would give us the ball for one last attack. Angel looked like he was through, but the defender was too strong. And just as we played that through, we were probably gonna have one last chance. The referee says this one needs to go to penalties. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that I don't actually have the best record when it comes to penalty shootouts, but we get the opening one straight in the middle of the goal thanks to Buwanga. Their striker, Kwanza has the chance to make it 2-2 and does exactly that. So the penalties are a pretty high standard for us right now. Lamella has a good chance and he sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. What a penalty that was. They've got a German guy, Ura. Of course, he's going to score and he makes it 3-3. Campos, one of our Mexican players that were only playing mainly because they're Mexican, gets his penalty saved. It looked like it hit the post, but it was actually saved, meaning we have to score this one with Angel just to stay in it. The composure circle was rapid and we went down the middle again. It paid off yet again. And if we couldn't save Martinez's penalty, that meant that Union were about to win. And they went for the Penenka, embarrassed us in front of everyone watching this video, and we lost the MLS final. I'd say we did a pretty good job of rebuilding LAFC. It's just a shame how it ended. All on penalties, there's nothing really you can do about that. Sometimes the AI, especially on higher difficulties, are just almost unbeatable when it comes to penalty shootouts. I couldn't believe the save that they did for the penalty top left. It was absolutely perfect, but we can watch as Philadelphia Union try and lift the trophy right here. Once again, I'll say thank you to Surprise Shirts for sponsoring this video, sending me a Mexico shirt and an LAFC shirt that I'll be wearing all around my hometown whenever I need to play football. But thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I've got some good series coming out over the next couple of weeks. So definitely subscribe if you're interested in seeing more of my career mode content because some of them are a bit unique and I'm very excited to share them with you. Thank you for watching. Really do appreciate it. Like the video, share it if you've really enjoyed it. Thank you and goodbye.